Hello, big news. I have man's disease, which is like normal flu, but a hell of a lot worse. Yeah, it's not one of them three day ones he normally gets either. A 24 hour one, you usually get a 24 hour one. Oh yeah, 24 hours, not that. No, it's gone, no yeah, it's yeah. not. This is a proper wheezy one, one that I might need carrying back to our workshop. It's not happening. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah, so slight change of plans. Yes. This is not the Monday out. Welcome to episode one of what is the Cortina build. Erinka. Erinka. Over to you, what is it? It is a 1968 Ford Cortina Deluxe. Originally a 1.3. Mark II. Yes. Originally a 1.3. When I got it, it had a 1.6 in it. And that was on its last legs. So I put a different 1.6 in it. Show the ladies and gentlemen what you have. There it is. Helpful. Can we see it? No. Nope. There it is. Yes. Where's it from? This is from a 1997 slash 98. Because it was on the border. It was a bit of a strange one with the wiring. Um, Ford Escort Mark V. 16 valve ZTEC yeah. 1600 engine. Yeah, so only a 1600. I didn't want anything bigger simply because one, it would have cost more, biggest thing. Two, I didn't want to have to mess around with brakes and suspension and all the rest of it. So this was almost like just a straight swap. So when I say it was a straight swap, it, it was and wasn't. It was straight as in it's a 1.6. However, this is not the standard inlet manifold for this engine. This engine came with the plastic inlet manifold which caught on the steering box. Not good. So I need to replace it with that. Next thing was fitting that gearbox onto the back. We'll talk about it in a bit but it's got a different gearbox. And because I used the 1.6 clutch and a uh, 2 litre Pinto clutch plate, um, there wasn't enough throw on the clutch in order to release the clutch. So at no point could you ever release it. So I had to have a, a 2.6 millimetre ring basically made to go between the flywheel and the pressure plate. If you want more details ask me in a question and I will happily answer more about that. On top of that I wanted the plastic fan. I didn't want electric fans so I had to get an adapter made up in here just down there out of aluminium so I could mount my plastic fan back on which worked really well I have to say it never overheats. I had to make an alternator bracket and a tensioner and because I changed the water pump, that bracket didn't fit, so I had to get that adjusted. Then there was the exhaust. I bought a flange, which just bolts onto the side of the head. I can see Mark smiling over there, he likes the word flange. <laughs> flange, awesome word. Um, and then I had to take the original, uh, well it's not the original, but it's a, a Ford exhaust. I think it's an Ashley downpipe or something, which would have been really close together there and further apart there and modify it so it fitted onto the flange that I bought. So that, that, sorry. that is the standard sorry. exhaust, but modified. <laughs> and then wrapped in bandage because it looked terrible. If you want to know more, ask a comment Put question. Put comments in the questions, yeah. That, yeah. I'm ill. What else did I do? Oh, front suspension. Front what? Front suspension. Which is like suspension. Suspension engine, <laughs> yeah. Front, the front suspension is slightly modified in that I couldn't find proper original inserts to go in there. So normally you'd buy a shock absorber insert or a damper insert that goes inside the suspension leg, bolts onto the top mount, which would have been like a bubble thing up here. I couldn't get them. And then someone said to me, well, why don't you get the original ones rebuilt, which I couldn't do because somebody had cut the legs down. So it had a nasty weld on it. So these ones are Volvo 240 inserts and Volvo 240 top mounts. So it's now got a rollable top mount and a slightly fatter damper inside it. So as you can see it is in a state of not quite complete. Um, it's had a lot of bodywork done. Um, partially by the previous owner which I had to undo because it was done on an extreme budget in the 80s. Um, they had put new um, like wheel arch panels in but they sort of brazed them on in five spots and I thought well, that's no good so I cut them out, did it all again, got it wrong had to fix it with filler and a hammer and stuff. Um, and it's now nearly complete. It's just got a little bit of filler work to do, like on the doors and things. And then we can think about putting some primer on it. But coming up now, you can see a few pictures of progress, basically, where it was and where it is now. <laughs>
So when Malcolm first got this car, it was actually quite a bit of rot on there. It had rot and rust on the roof and in usual places on Cortinas, around the pillars and on the inside of the rear pillars here and the rear quarter. Yes, so what I did is cut it out, got some just plain sheets of steel and made new bits. Simple as, there's no repair panels, it's just make it yourself. And that's it. As for the roof, that was just a case of cleaning it up, sorting it out, bit of filler. It's still not right because it's really hard to get that right with the big curve and stuff going on. Did this one have the vinyl roof on it? No, it's never had a vinyl roof. Okay, but it was originally burgundy, wasn't it? Yeah, black cherry. They you call just it. see under here, under your car, that's just dust. No, there is some on the dashboard still. Okay, we shall head on in and there, in and in there, which is like in there, but more involved, and have a look. So in here, you can see that's the original colour. And what have you decided to do with the car, Malcolm? Um, well. When I bought it, it was in Lagoon Blue, which, because I'm colourblind, looked grey until I was reliably informed that it was in fact blue. Um, I had some pictures sent to me by the owner who had it in the 80s, um, and it was redone in the same red. However, because it was a photograph which was then scanned and sent to me via email, it looked more red, and I liked it. So I went and got some of that red mixed up. So it's not quite the same as the original, but it is close. Maybe probably closer to a Dragoon Red, maybe, if you know what Ford colours are. Of course, like most Cortinas of their day, this was pretty rotten on the arches. They were. However, this car, if you look at our webpage and you'll see the project page for this car, um, there's a bit of history on it. But in the 80s, this was rebuilt to a, a budget, like I say. And they had replaced these arches. Um, I guess at the time, repair panels would have been fairly cheap. But what they'd done is they'd cut the arch out where the rotten bits were, and they got the repair panel, which is kind of a hexagonal kind of shape with straight edges all around it, really strange. They just shoved it up behind and then brazed it in a few places and then just put filler over the top. And it was really thick filler as well. And I mean, it still is quite thick filler because it's really hard to sort this stuff out when you're not a body expert. Um, so basically I cut it all out and welded it properly all the way around. And we had to also replace the entirety of the bottom edge of this, um, what is the tool well on this side, there's like a toolbox that sits on the inside. This whole bottom edge had gone, so that's been replaced with steel. Everything's replaced with steel, and then there's filler over the top of it, but there is steel under everything. There's no dodgy bodge bits. There's dodgy bits, but not bodge bits. Now, I'm sure there's a question you're desperate to hear the answer to, and that is, what colour are you going to do now? Well, not now, but car, after when the you primer. spray it. Well, well, after, after the, the grey, we'll be uh, wheezing. <laughs> Go! <laughs> we already talked about the colour. <laughs> do we? Do we? Yes. Oh, I don't know, I'm ill. We did it on the end of the dashboard. Give me sympathy, I'm ill. It's going to be red. Is it? Yeah. What, the same red? No, a lighter red. Like so the, it's not the same then? The picture from the email we already talked about. <laughs> did we? Yeah. I wasn't listening, sorry. No. It does happen, <laughs> doesn't it? It's terrible. Sorry. So I've got the colour I already said was the answer to the question he just asked. I'm ill! He's ill. So when it came to the doors, um, the rear doors were in okay condition. However, I managed to find another pair of rear doors, which I needed to use this section, the upright section here from this old rear door, uh, to repair the driver's door pillar, because the bottom had snapped clean off and was just the whole window top was blowing around in the breeze, basically. So I had to cut this section of the door frame bit out and made a new piece to weld in there and. That actually came out really, really well. I'm pleased with that. The rest of it is just basically a little bit of filler, a little bit of filler primer, rub it down, paint it. When it came to the bonnet, the bonnet was in reasonable condition, but I couldn't afford to replace it. The front edge here where the spring is for the, the bonnet latch itself uh, had ended up less strong than the spring itself. So when someone had shut it, it had just collapsed inside and broken apart. So the previous owner had fitted uh, bonnet pins through the, the bonnet there, which I didn't like, so I got rid of them. Repaired this panel here, sprayed the whole thing, put a new one of these latchy bits on, and uh, that'll do. And the other side? And the other side, a little bit of filler on a couple of spots. Just being careful, I don't want to chip it too much. There's a couple of areas around here somewhere that I've got some filler in where someone's put something heavy on there or lent on it or sat on it or something. Inevitably, over the years, the doors get dented and this one was no exception. It had a couple of dents 
in here. So what Malcolm has done is just filled in the holes with filler and that's in its pre-rub down stage. So it'll just be a case of rubbing that down, smoothing it over and then ready for primer. And it was pretty much the same deal with the boot. Um, where the badge was originally, where it had the Cortina emblem over here, that had gotten a bit damaged, so I just cleaned it up as best I could with a hammer and dolly, and then just a bit of filler on there. And I think there's a couple of spots on the top, which you can just about see over here, where there was some filler put in as well. So when this car rolled off the production line in 1968, or ish, it would have had these on, with a hideous hubcap thing with little louvre bits all around it and they, they, I suppose they were nice for the car at the time. And they're 13 inch steel wheels. That's a 13 inch by five or four and a half or something rubbish with a terrible tyre on it. Then in the 80s when it was refurbished, young lad, 17, wanted his car to look nice, he managed to find some four spoke revolutions. Also uh, 13 inch but these are six inch wide. I like these however one of them is buckled and I couldn't be bothered to find a replacement wheel. On passing, uh, a friend of ours happened to say, I've got some wheels, do you fancy putting those on it? And I thought, actually, I like those because they are Weller wheels, mm -hmm. so they're pretty simple wheels. However, these are from Dutton kit cars, hence the D-shape. So they're basically the same as the Weller wheels with the triangles in, but with Ds instead. And what size tyres are on those? Uh, they are, I believe, at the moment, 185... 60 or something like that, but I'm going to be changing that to a slightly higher profile. Possibly. I haven't decided because the diff change might mess things up. Now a problem with any old Ford, or probably any old car really, is that the keys and the barrels for the locks get worn out. And I found that with mine, even after I replaced the sliders and little doodars inside, I could still open it with the handle of a teaspoon. So I decided I don't want the boot lock. So it's still going to be there, physically, but it won't do anything. I've added this, which is actually a like a bicycle cable end that you adjust your brakes on your bicycle with. And I have a tandem bicycle cable that runs from here, right around the boot, comes out of this hole here, goes through, and it's going to come out next to the driver's seat, where I shall make a little handle where you can go pop and release the boot. And I've done that, and it works really well. I'm very pleased with it. Good stuff. At first glance, you might think, oh, it's got a Lotus steering wheel on it. But you'd be wrong. It isn't. I don't actually know what it's from, but I liked it, so I kept it. I just revarnished it when I got the car. And then it had the horrible black, almost like a pole ball um, gear knob, which was hideous. So I replaced that with this one, which has got, it's actually off a mark on GT, I think. Um, but I varnished that as well. Uh, it looks nice, I think. So what about interior? Well, the interior is not going to be all of this rubbish. Um, the original rear seats will remain because they're in pretty good shape. There's one tiny bit of seam that's gone on the seat pad. The rest of it's brilliant. In the front, when I got it, it had some Series 2s. So this is a Series 1 uh, Mark II Cortina, so it was pre-facelift. Um, and the driver's seat was absolutely terrible, torn to pieces. So I put in, uh, courtesy of my next door neighbour at the time, Kenny, um, some 3 Series BMW seats from a 320D, I believe they're from. Super comfortable, Alcantara, and uh, they were really nice, so I managed to wrap other things in Alcantara as well. So I've done the B pillars, the C pillars, and the roof lining, all in Alcantara style material. It's actually a, a mock Alcantara, but it's very effective. Oh, on the top of the dash, I did that as well. Uh, so that's it as far as the interior. And carpets were fairly new anyway, so I left them alone. Now, if I can hear you correctly in internet land, you're probably asking, Malcolm, what else have you done? What a marvellous question that is. And here's the answer. Well, in addition to putting that 1.6 ZTEC engine in there, I thought, well, the four-speed box is rubbish. It kept jumping out of second gear. Get rid of it. So I put in a Type 9, which is a five-speed box from Capri's, Cortina's, Granada's, Sierra's, all that sort of stuff. To give me that extra gear ratio which as it turns out isn't all that great because where they put it is in first and second rather than fifth which is a bit pointless if you ask me but there you go um, so to combat that problem because this still has the differential gear from the 1.3 engine it just revs up and screams like crazy doesn't go any speed at all but gets there very quickly so here's the combat 
The original diff is a 4.11 to 1 ratio or something like that, and this one is a 3.54, which means it was geared down quite a lot. It's a bit like putting bigger wheels and tyres on your car, it gears it right up so you get less acceleration but a better top speed and therefore you'll have a lower revolutions per minute at a sensible cruising speed. I just need to try and fit this. Good stuff. So Malcolm, what is the next stage? The next stage on this project, which I'll hopefully get some of on video for you, is I need to do some final touches on the bodywork, so the roof, the doors and some bits around the door shuts. Then I want to get it into primer, high build primer and then let it sit and rest so the primer can shrink. But before we do, which is like before, but yeah. sooner. Try it again. Before we do all that, we have to move it. Yes. From this workshop to our workshop. So, in the next video, first of all, you will see that move happening, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then you'll see more work on this. And that brings us to the end of this first Cortina episode. In our next episode, we will be reviewing the brand new all new 2019 Toyota Corolla Hybrid. Exciting. Absolutely. And as you've seen by other videos, we've got lots more coming up. So, thank you for joining us. Please don't forget to subscribe, click the bell and all that gubbins. See, did it yep. again. And until next time, please ride and drive carefully. But have fun. Bye. Bye.